Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we're gonna draw a sloping mountain. Okay, um, I'm going to draw out three trees. When you are painting or drawing, it's always best to use an odd number. So three is what I'm choosing. And I am going to just sketch it out. Can you see that it went through the mountain? I'm gonna erase that mountain line so that the tree is actually in front of the mountain. I'm gonna put another tree here. My strokes are very loose. They're actually just guidelines of where I wanna paint. And I'm gonna put a little tree here. They can be all different sizes. As you know, in the forest, some trees grow faster and bigger than others. Okay, and some might be older than others too. Okay, so there's my trees. So what I like to do first is my background or what I call the negative space, and that's gonna be the sky. I am going to prepare blue and a nice rose for my sky. So it's a beautiful winter sky. And how I prepare that, I'm gonna put 10 drops of clean water and I'm pushing my brush against the side of the cup so that the water falls right in and I'm gonna make two puddles about that size. The reason why we use this palette is we wanna water down our colors. The colors in the paint that you purchase, they're highly concentrated. So we want to soften them, and how you do that is with water. So now I'm gonna pick up some blue paint on my brush, and I'm gonna drop it right in the puddle and make a nice blue puddle. I'm using the larger of my three brushes to prepare my colors. I'm then gonna clean my brush. So this cup is gonna become my dirty water. I'm gonna get a little clean water. I'm gonna go into the green, oops, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go into the rose and just make a beautiful winter sky. A little bit of rose. I'm gonna darken that just to here. Okay. My two colors are prepared. I am going to paint in what I call a blob pattern. No straight lines, no straight circles. We want to have an uneven look. Do you see how I'm painting this? So that it's creating lighter blues, darker blues, and there's no set pattern. So that when it dries, you're gonna have this beautiful real life looking sky. Now I'm throwing some pink in and I'm painting the pink in a blob like fashion. When the pink and the blue come together, they're making a soft purple. Okay, now I'm gonna make this skyline as close to my pencil as possible, but I don't wanna paint over my pencil. Anytime you draw what you're gonna paint first, if you do not paint over the lines, you can erase those pencil lines as if they were never there. So I'm making a mountain a little bigger than it was before because I'm having less sky, okay? I don't have to take my painting to the very end of my paper. I'm just gonna throw in a little more blue. You see how I'm blobbing it? No straight lines. My brush dances on my paper. I might even wanna have a little darker blue here at the top for a nice contrast. You don't wanna make a boring painting, you wanna make an exciting painting. Okay, there's my sky. Now, you cannot paint this tree that's very close to the sky while the sky is still wet. What will happen is the blue from the sky will bleed into the green from the tree. And the green from the tree may bleed into your sky and you won't have a separation. So what you need to do is to let this dry before you do any tree work, okay? However, we do have some snow space here that we can work on. And I wanna show you this picture again. I have a shadow 
behind each tree. And I have a little shadow here in the snow to indicate that the snow has little slopes in it, okay? And we're gonna do that making a gray paint, okay? While this is drying, let's prepare a gray paint. I'm gonna take my lodge brush again, and I'm gonna do 10 drops of water in a new palette. If I push my brush on the side, all the water in the brush goes down in the center of this palette, okay? Now to make gray, you're gonna mix two colors. So the first color I need is white. I'm gonna swish my brush right in the white and deposit all that and make a white puddle. Okay, and clean my brush. Roll it on my paper towel, make sure it's clean, get a little water. Now black is the strongest color you'll have in this palette. So I don't need nearly as much black as I put in the white. And I'm gonna drop this black right on top, mix it together, and make a real nice gray, okay? While our sky is still drying, we can put some shadow at the base of the tree. Watch me, no straight lines but I'm going to follow where the tree is at the ground from one end here, as if the sun is coming this way, and the other end here. Now, if I wanna lighten my gray as it comes away from and the top of the tree, add a little water and let it just soften to almost the white of the paper, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'm gonna follow the same shadow lines here as though the sun is hitting all three trees in the same spot. Okay, so here it's darkest at the base of the tree. I'm gonna put a little water here and lighten that gray so that it it's kind of lightening as the tree gets smaller. And my last tree some shadow at the base. Okay, nice and blob-like, no straight lines. Get a little clean water and let it follow it. Oh, there's a little paint there. Let's see if we can pick that up, get rid of that. Okay, so I now have three shadows on three trees, but what I also wanna do is put some shadow right in the snow, and again, Blobs, no straight lines. We're gonna blob a little to make it look like the snow has bumps in it. Because up on the mountain, there's a little bit of a, a wind and that soft snow kind of rolls around. Okay. And it makes the snow more interesting than if it was all white. Okay, now we still need to let this blue-pink sky dry. Now we need to let the gray shadowing dry. This is where you have to put all your brushes down and you have to relax for a few minutes. You don't wanna rush your painting because that will just cause a mess. Colors will bleed together that you had no intention of letting them bleed together. Okay, now that everything is dry, I'm going to erase all those lines that I don't need. And as I said, the kneaded eraser is wonderful in that you don't have to push any of those um, pieces that fall off your eraser at the end of your pencil. Okay, so I have just extended my mountain to where the paint stops in the sky. I can also erase this tree that's in the sky, okay? The other parts of the tree I'm gonna keep Right now, we're going to paint our trees. And I'm gonna use two different greens to give the tree a fuller uh, look and again, to make it look more interesting. So I'm gonna prepare these two cups, 10 drops of water, push your brush against the side, all that water goes right in. Now my set of paints contains two greens. If you don't have that, you can make one green, then you can do a white with your green and make a real soft mint, 
or you can do um, a little blue with your green and put a teal. You can put the yellow with the green. Um, so you can adjust your green to make two colors and that will make your trees more interesting. So I'm gonna pick up some green, drop it in this puddle, clean my brush in that dirty water. I'm gonna pick up some of this green and drop it here. Okay. So now I have two greens prepared. Take my smaller brush, watercolor paper. You do not paint anything white. So the white in your paint set is to modify all of these colors. If you want to leave some white in your trees as though snow is on them, you just don't paint it. You leave that the paper, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint some of this green. Again, blob-like, no straight lines, Dance it all around. This is my first green. Okay, there's my first tree with that one color. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. Dance this brush around. Notice the white that I left. Okay, we're gonna put some snow in these trees. Gonna come up and do this top one. Now I can come right up to my blue and put that green right there. Leave some white for snow. Fill that tree in nice. There we go, some healthy looking trees up on the mountain. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. Now what I wanna do with the second green, is I'm gonna put it in, you're gonna see what happens. It's gonna follow some of the wet. See how it's covering some of that first color? So I don't wanna to do too much because I want the first color to show in spots. I want this new green to show in spots. Just let it bleed around. Okay, so my trees look Pretty interesting, I think. I'm gonna come up here and do this one as well. All right, these are the watered down colors. We made them in our tray. Okay, this needs to dry a little bit. Then the last thing I'm going to do is throw on a darker color on the shadowed side of the trees, okay? as though the sun is coming this way and it's brightening the left side of each tree and then the shadow side has the darker colors in it so that the whole picture is in sync, okay? It's complementing each other, it's in sync with the sun this way, darker and the shadow. Okay, so let's darken up this color and come back here and just add in blobs, of course. We don't want any straight lines. We want it to be interesting trees. And it's gonna be the darkest here on the ground. It's gonna meet the shadow, okay? There we go.